Good All right. morning. You ready for the PWOD? Tell me. Go to 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 7. We're continuing with our never give up message here this morning. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 5 through 7. This is the New Living Translation. It says that, you see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves, but we preach that Jesus Christ is Lord and we ourselves are the servants of Jesus for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness has made the light shine in our hearts so that we could know the glory of God, that it is seen in the face, excuse me, the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse seven says, we now have this light shining in our hearts but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Amen. Yes. Father, we Amen. love you. We thank you for your word. Again, today, we declare that the body of Christ will never give up in Jesus' name. Now, he starts off here talking about authentic ministries. Mm -hmm. And he starts giving the criteria of what an authentic ministry looks like and what one does not look like. He says that we preach about Jesus, period. They preach about Jesus and not themselves. Now, when someone gives testimonies, this is a testimony. We give testimonies all the time. Testimonies about what God's doing through the ministry, but it is pointed towards Jesus. This is not for a personal agenda or anything like that. But he says messages that are drenched with personal agendas or self-gratification, he said these are not authentic ministries because they do not point themselves to Jesus. And, and a, lot of our, a lot of teachings that we have been seeing puts Jesus as an addendum on there, but really has nothing to do with him. And it's all a bunch of personal opinions and, and it's not the teaching of the Bible. So we want to make sure that we are teaching the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, and releasing the word because this is what Paul is saying to the, to the church at Corinth. He says, we don't go around preaching about us, mm -hmm. but we preach Jesus Christ as Lord. He says here that the light is shining in our hearts. The proof of the love of Christ Jesus can be spoken more of your actions than it can be spoken of your words. Because a lot of people say a lot of words, but then their actions show differently of how they live their lives That's according good. to the things that they say. So to the dying world, he says, we have to be a light that is shining in these dark places and, and, and make it clear that the light that is living on the inside of us, being the light of Christ Jesus, that people will see that the power is coming from the Lord and it's not our own um influence or trying to show that through personal you know grat personal gratitude and strength and all of this that you can actually turn things around no it is through prayer it is through jesus it is through the power of the holy spirit that we see signs wonders and miracles and things take place and we give all the glory to god then second corinthians chapter 4 8 through 10 so let's go on down we just read 5 through 7 8 through 10, I'm going to take it and break it down a little bit because this is a scripture that a lot of people love to quote in church and love to put out there, but I don't think that we truly understand it. It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I don't think that the church of America has ever experienced true tribulation. Mm -hmm. Persecution, yeah. Yeah, persecution or tribulation. I don't yeah. believe that it is truly experienced. They shut down a couple of months, big deal. Um, should we have shut down? Probably not. Um, what happened during the shutdown? We um, saw the difference between church attenders and Christians. Mm -hmm. um, but when it says we're pressed on every side but not crushed, I don't know if we have really experienced the pressure and the pressing that Paul and them are talking about here. He says, we're perplexed, but we're not driven into despair. I, 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 don't, I don't know. There's so many people out there today that are claiming Christianity that, that are allowing the perplexity of what's happening in America to be something yeah. that is driving them into a desperation of uh, having to take medication because they are so torn by things that are taking place to where they're 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 literally having mental breakdowns and they're depressed and all of this stuff i can understand 
where things could drive an individual into a state of depression, into all these different situations that are taking place. But I do not believe that it is so perplexing to where a believer that believes in Christ Jesus, that stands on the word of God, that declares the truth of, of Jesus Christ and, and, and speaks the word with power and authority can then turn around and say, oh my God, it's so bad. We're just in despair and we're, we're hurt. And we're, no, 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 we're, we're really not. You still have freedom to go to church. You still have freedom yeah. to preach. You still have freedom to worship. You still have freedom to do all of these things here. So you, we, we haven't really seen it. The, the next verse really shows it. He says, we are hunted down. I, I had not heard of the first Christian being hunted in America. <laughs> I've not heard of the first church yeah. being hunted down. And and not and, and it says we are hunted down but never abandoned by God. Mm -hmm. God has not abandoned you. God has not abandoned America. And, and I'm sick of these people saying that God is taking his hands off of America. No, he hasn't. If that was the case, there'd still be abortion legal in America. So God hasn't taken his hand off of America. God is still listening to the prayers of the remnant and the faithful yes. that are out there. It's not an American religion. It's a world religion. Uh, I say religion. It's not an American Christianity. It's a world Christianity. Yeah. So you, we are not experiencing being hunted down. The, regardless of what you hear on the news or what you may think, you, yeah. you've not been hunted. No, yeah. The next verse says, we get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Okay, we may get knocked down by some things, but remember, you are not destroyed. You are still living. You are still alive. You are still... Yes. Hearing the word of God right now on the internet, it is still available to you. You still have the ability to carry your Bible and read your Bible. You still have the ability to speak and declare the truth of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Caitlin, so, for the stars. We may be not down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, watch this, through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus. You know what this means? Mm -hmm. They were beat. I haven't seen any Christians being wow. beat. Beat down, beat up, thrown into prison for preaching the gospel. Said so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. So they're saying, look, you're not just hearing us talk about this. You're not just hearing testimonies. You're not just seeing us preach. You can look at our bodies and see where we have been whipped. We've been beaten. We've been put through the ringer. And we're not seeing that. Mm hmm so how can we say, oh, we're perplexed? Why? Because the AC went out? Preach. Because the sound system's not that good today? Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't show up to usher to take the offering or hand out, hand out a pamphlet? Um, we, 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 99% of the challenges we have in the church are self-inflicted due to personal agenda and people. Come on. Not persecution on the church. Not tribulation on the church. 99% of the problems in the church is because we got weak Christians that are pansies, that act like babies, that want church their way and don't want to submit themselves to an authority and be blessed, but they want to come in and try and rule and reign because they actually have no authority outside of the church and they think just because they've been given a title or because they claim to be a Christian that they could come in and try and say, well, this isn't right. This is, okay, your theology degree and your, you know, front porch whatever thing that you've got going on is a bunch of joke. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, all of this mess that we're hearing is not real truth. We got it good, people. Yeah. We got it good. Now, watch this. 2 Corinthians 4, 11 through 12. Yes, we live under constant danger of death. That is not us. <laughs> that is not us. Woo. That is not you. You're not living under constant danger of death because you serve Jesus. They were. So that the life of Jesus will be evident mm -hmm. in our dying bodies. They're willing to die for Jesus Christ. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. Hear me, church. Hear me. I'm convinced. Okay, let me get rid of this notification. I am convinced that America would have less Christians if they were in danger of death of being a Christian. 
because right now Christianity is a social club of fun. It is a place where they can intermingle, come together, talk business, do all this stuff without any persecution or tribulation. If they were in true danger of being a Christian, over half or more than half of our church attenders would renounce Jesus to save their own lives or save their family members. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that what we have sitting in pews right now that are scared to talk to their family, scared to talk to their friends, scared to talk to a perfect stranger and ask them, do you know Christ as Lord and Savior? If you can't do that in public outside the four walls of the church, then when somebody puts a gun in your face and says, renounce Jesus, you'll do it. Amen. You will renounce Christ because you're really not a believer. Amen. They were in constant danger of death. We have to stop this Sunday morning good old boy social club and get back to real Christianity. Yes. We don't have to go out and scream in the streets. We don't have to hold up signs in the middle of the roads. We don't have to stop traffic. We don't have to do any of that mess. All you have to do is build a relationship with somebody one on one, house to house, breaking bread, giving testimonies of Jesus Christ, loving on people and asking them to give their lives to Jesus and renounce the evil of the world. Mm -hmm. This will bring real and true change. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, are you against the church? No, I am not against the church. But we got a lot of people lifting hands right now, saying things that if it came to the rubber meeting the road, they would throw Jesus under the bus and run because they do not have true, authentic Christianity. It's a game right now. If you, how can you stand against death if you can't communicate Christ outside. Mm. You can't. Pe people will throw Jesus <clears throat> under the bus to save their own skin. Because if you're not willing to be the light in the darkness, how can you say, oh, I'm persecuted? No, you're not. We're not persecuted. Mm -hmm. I'm struck dead. You've not been struck dead. I'm hunted. You have not been hunted. What's the other one? Not down, not destroyed. No, you're, you're perplexed. We, we, we may be perplexed. Mm -hmm. Many are perplexed. Mm -hmm. But those that are perplexed have also given in to despair. That's good, Chris. I'm here to tell you this morning, the scripture tells us to never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Mm. Never give up. Regardless of what's coming. Regardless of what you see out there. Jesus. Ooh. Never give up. If they come and say, Chris, they're going to kill your family. What are you going to say? Davy, faith will be with Jesus soon. Mm-hmm. We'll be with Jesus soon. I hate it. But folks, we hadn't seen this. So I need I need I need Christians to stand up and say, guys, stop. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. So we're gonna keep going. If these guys can do it, then we can do it. If they can do it in the scripture, then we can do it. And here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to give up. So never give up. Keep pursuing. Keep going after Christ. Let's get this thing right. Quit making the church look like a mockery. Yes. So I'm here to ask you this morning. You really saved?
Are you really a believer? Are you really a Christian? Go do the work that God has called you to do. Be a light in the darkness. Love on people. Mm -hmm. Love on them. Share Christ with them when the opportunity arises. Go out, do what you're supposed to do. Amen. It's the only way that this thing's going to change. Amen. Going to church, raising your hands, jumping and shouting, seeing a good light show, having great music, all of that stuff is cool. I'm down with it. But if you leave and it doesn't change you and does not yeah. do anything for you, then it was a waste of time. Yeah. A waste of time. Yeah. Ooh, let me see. Amen. Amen. So we're never going to give up. Amen. Wow. This is a heavy word this morning. I need you to share, tag someone, inbox this word. This is important. There's a lot of you on here this morning. Um, if this is your first time watching, welcome to the prophetic word of the day. We do this Monday through Friday, 830 Central, 930 Eastern. Um, go to our website, check out other things that we have going on. Go back and look at our prior posts on our social media platforms, our storyboards, as well as hit the stars. We have giveaways, revival giveaways is, um, for every time that you give stars, your name goes into a drawing. I wrote a lot of them down yesterday, well, all the ones since the last one. And so we're getting ready for that. Um, and be praying for us, and we are praying with you. Good morning, Hank. Hello, Shelly Brown. There's so many of you that are jumping on from literally all over the globe right now. If you're just me. now jumping on, go back and watch the replay. Go back and watch the replay, okay? I'm yeah. going to pray for you. And um, Mike Thomas said, this is so powerful. Preach again tomorrow, brother. <laughs> oh, I will, brother. Thank you. Thank you yes. so much. May the Lord bless you, Pastor. And we can't wait to get up there with you. I was thinking about you yesterday in prayer. Yeah. Um, what a phenomenal time we're going to have, man. We're going to stand up for the truth. Um, we just declare over you right now the blessing yes. of the Lord. We declare that no plague, no pestilence, no tragedy come near you. We declare that you have the mind of Christ yes. and everything you say and everything that you do will be led by the power of, your, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we ask right now, Lord God, that we would prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Every seed that is sown into the kingdom, let it be made manifest according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11, a thousand fold back to you. Meaning that when you sow seed, God yes. shall release a thousand fold blessing back into you we, when you do it into fertile soil. Yes. We declare over you that the seed of the word of God would go deep into the marrow of the bones yes. of people. It will change them and they will give themselves to Christ as Lord and Savior. We love you this morning. Make sure that you go do that. Go partner with this ministry. Watch what God does with you when you say, I'll put God first and not my finances. Now remember, tie to your church, but you sow seed here. Doing so, watch what God does. We love you. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow. Be blessed. Never give up. Amen. We love you. See ya.